You cannot walk into this space and smile. You cannot walk into this space and see kids giggling and laughing, learning, and seeing the light bulbs go off in their heads. You walk in, the staff is already there to greet you. You feel the sincerity that they actually care about your experience and your child's experience and their safety and well-being. It's so fun to be here. It probably sounds terrible saying it out loud, but I've seen many kids in tears as they're leaving, walking out the front door because they're not ready to leave. The Children's Imaginarium uh, is a STEM-focused learning environment for children and families. Science, technology, engineering, and math. It's a place for children to learn, parents to engage, and families to connect. Kids are learning as they're playing. They don't know that they're learning. They're just here to have fun and to see the chickens and to go down the slide. Um, but they're, they're learning how the mechanics work as well. In creating the business plan, accessibility in all forms was very important to us and to our community. And that wasn't just financially, but also location-wise. Being in downtown Wasa was important to us. It's on the bus route and walking distance to a, a number of child care centers. Providing access so they can attend for a daily admission, reduce costs for field trips. That accessibility is very strong in my background and I want to make sure that we're providing access to all. Not from the standpoint of a co-founder, but as a community member here, my biggest thing is economic barrier to education is not something we want. For those underserved rural communities that don't have the opportunity for STEM learning, perhaps they don't even have a science teacher. We can provide those opportunities for exploration. People had many different reasons for wanting to invest in the children's Imaginarium. Attracting talent. Some of them was they wanted to be able to bring their kids here. Others it was they knew what it could do on the tourism side of things. Our outreach has been tremendous, even further than we thought it would be. Our first visit here, Lila was a year and a half, and Lila loved it. She made herself at home real quick, and um, after one visit, we decided to get a membership. In December of 2023, we opened with the goal of having 28,000 people through our doors and 400 memberships. As of today, we've had over 60,000 people through our doors. We've seen visitors from over 150 zip codes within um, the state of Wisconsin and actually outside of the state as well. Before, you would have had to travel hours to find any type of an attraction like this. We are just so blessed to have this right in our backyard, part of the vibrancy of the Wasa community. It's a visual investment in children and families. It's open to anyone who's seeking out the experience. The big thing for our community is attracting and retaining talent and making sure they put down roots, they stay here, they build those relationships, and this is a place for people to do that. For this museum to be the community's museum, the community had to be involved. We give credit to our donors in our community um, by calling them the visionaries. In our constructed area, we had conversation with contractors and said, what do we need to offer to kids to introduce them to careers in the trades? Having those conversations and again understanding what their needs are helped us identify what we should put in the exhibits. One of the exhibits that we have is a wind-powered exhibit that was sponsored by Green Heck Fan Corporation. We have a Farm to Fork Market Gallery that was sponsored by Marathon Cheese Corporation. An amazing STEM lab gallery that has been furnished with custom cabinetry from C-Tech Manufacturing. We're always looking for opportunities to connect with local employers, um, community partners, our local educators to offer those STEM-based learning experiences for our youth. Watia is looking to um, expand the transportation industry, being able to bring that to different kids' ages. We've really focused in the high school and middle school ages in the past, um, but we understand to be able to get kids interested in the industry, you gotta do it earlier than that. 
My son is two years old and all he wants to do is fix things right now with daddy. Being able to partner with the Imaginarium and create opportunities here for industries like the automotive and transportation industry is important, right? And it's important for the parents to be able to see those industries and the availability and the career pathing that they can take through STEM learning. We have a sense of alignment around wanting to be a place where people call home. We want this to be a place where they live and work and play and also a great place to grow businesses. To be able to pick up the phone and have a conversation with individuals in our community, whether it's the president of an organization, the people who are working in the manufacturing floor, um, to the teachers and educators. Knowing we had that support early on is what kept driving us. We kept saying we don't want to let our donors down. Most take seven years to open. Uh, the Children's Imaginarium took a decade. I had a conversation with an individual during the pandemic and I said, I just, I don't know if we can keep up with this. It just, it, it's, it maybe is not going to happen. And he said, Tammy, people need something to look forward to after this. Um, and I'm like, okay, yes they do. So let's continue on. And viewing the pandemic and that kind of short-sightedness, where does this ever end, how do we ever convene again as a community, was scary. Um, and when we started to come out of the pandemic, this space was needed more than any other. Kids needed to be back with kids, families needed to be connecting again and learning together. It was a struggle. We'd meet at 9 o'clock at night because that's what worked for our schedules. Or we'd meet at the parks while the kids could play. Sometimes we had to divide and conquer, but it worked out best for us to be able to stick together. And then it got to a point where we were too far and it was just, we need to make this happen. Our founders uh, never wavered in their dedication and their persistence. Through their tenacity and through the generous support of our um, local community, we now have this amazing asset in our downtown. I personally believe that the Imaginarium is an anchor institution. What sets the Imaginarium aside from other places that are kid-friendly is there is room for independent play and fostering imagination in the children, but there's also space that encourages parents to actively engage with their kids. As a parent, it's nice to feel that outside of the realm or the sphere of family, friends and acquaintances, like my daughter is loved here, you know, it brings me to tears, but she just knows the people here, the staff, they're always so friendly. Um, like I said, the happiness here is very contagious. The human component and interaction on the floor at the Children's Imaginarium and in the programming that people can experience here is super important. So to learn, you also need that human connection. It was always our plan to get it to the point of opening and getting the right team here to then carry it to where it needs to go. Tammy and I spearheaded and organized the effort to open the doors, um, but it's really our community, the support from them that opened it. The community can really embrace it, have ownership in it, and really take it to where they want to take it.